welcome to everybody, and a special welcome too to Sir Robert Askin, a very good friend of the Echidnas. Right that time. A lot of you people are probably saying, how do we select our roast D? Um, why not a personality? <laughs> He's a self-made man. He's now on television. He's giving the Australian local talent a chance in the industry. I want you to meet our guest of honour today, Mr John Singleton. <laughs> John Singleton gets out of bed at five o'clock every morning and goes home. <laughs> After a quick breakfast, John dones his tracksuit for a quick jog round his wallet. <laughs> and then it's time to start thinking about that night's John Singleton show. John goes straight to his office and writes one commercial, then he goes to the toilet and writes another six. <laughs> John rings home to see if he's still married. John Singleton comes from a long line of dead people. <laughs> Most of which appear on a show every week. <laughs> but let's forget about a show. A million people say that every week, you know? You know that? When you think about it, you've been in quite a few fights. I remember the the time about the policeman. Do you remember that one? No, no I didn't. <laughs> if that had been anybody else, anyone here, we would still be in a lot of serious trouble. But you go to prove that New South Wales has the best police force that money can buy. <laughs> I do actually know I, for a fact that John was completely right in, in his actions. He was exonerated completely. Not easy to say, is it? <laughs> exonerated, I can do it again. Exonerated completely. And uh, I think that uh, that uh, little hassle you had with that person in the motel was perfectly correct on your behalf. She's a tough lady, I tell you now. <laughs> She's well known around Adelaide, I would. It, it could have been worse. Luckily, uh, one of her grandsons stepped between them. <laughs> Don't people knock you about drinking. It's a, uh, it's a great uh, attribute. A few weeks ago, apparently he had a few. Maggie, I'm sorry to say this in front of you. Behind you, Maggie. Love the coat. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> what do you feed it? Looks great. He had a few drinks. And he took this young lady up to his room. I hate to be the first to tell uh, Maggie this. And uh, they sort of stood there and he winked at her. She winked at him. He talked in the wings. I listened. <laughs> he shushed. I carried on. <laughs> then he unbuttoned his shirt. She unbuttoned her shirt. Then he undid his pants. She undid her pants. Then he blew her a kiss. And she blew him a kiss. And then he suddenly realised he was looking into a mirror. First name, John. Let's go to the good book. The Bible. Him go to a Bible? <laughs> the only time he sees a Bible is in a motel. <laughs> then he uses it as a forklift. <laughs> and you've got singletons, as in carpets. Carpet cleaning. It's like his sex activities. <laughs> He's up on the floor. Always likes the mat finish. <laughs> so I say, first name John. Which is true to the country of jo Singleton. We've done it again. <laughs> Who said I wouldn't need me bloody glasses? Look at that. Ah. No. Can I have a drum roll, please? <laughs> Getting close now. Blank. 
Charles E. Blank. Nothing black. Ah, here we are. So I say, Singleton, John, the magic man who... I've thrown the lot away. John is a John we got to go to, we impel to go to. Singleton, a country town. So to sum it up, I'm ad-libbing at the moment. John Singleton, a dunny in the grip of the grape. Thank you. You're Australian. That's the second good point about you. The other one is that you're not an import. <laughs> This man on my right has done more for Australian advertising than anyone else in the advertising profession. He got out of it. <laughs> Actually, TV would improve if they shot less programs and more people like him. <clears throat> Fancy getting any advice on show business from John Singleton. We'd be like a doctor telling you to take two Aspros to cure your leprosy. <laughs> Why do you keep on uh, scratching yourself like that? Because I'm the only one who knows where it's itchy. <laughs> He's got a lot of friends. Half his friends couldn't find the time, other half are doing it. <laughs> I didn't invite them. What I'd like to actually do is... Uh, hey, Mel. Oh, God, you can't do... It's the original trouser snake. You can't do that. <laughs> Not to be confused with the digger reveals one-eyed talking lizard. <laughs> Yeah, bringing your pets on and everything, Cal. Why didn't you leave it in the truck? Everybody wants to get in the bloody show business. That's what he wants to get into show business. I'll give him show business. Yeah. Here. Do you want to meet the cast? <laughs> John Singleton gave me my start. He gave me the job as the ringmaster at Soul Brothers Circus. I followed the star, a female elephant. <laughs> At 11 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 7 o'clock that night, she had a movement I'll never forget. <laughs> For seven days and four weeks, I followed that movement. <laughs> it was a knockout. <coughs> Funny was up to here, and I was standing in it. I screamed out, don't make waves. Finally, I turned to John, I said, John, I've got to quit the show. He said, what, and get out of show business? <laughs> a lot of words have been said about Singo here today. All I can say is, John, enjoy yourself, relax, hit someone. <laughs> He's a self-made millionaire, I, I know this, because only last week he bought his dog, a little boy to play with. <laughs> He's married to a beautiful model, Maggie Eckhart has his own television show, and he'd give it all up in a minute just for one thing, some talent. <laughs> I'd like to get the show rolling tonight, but one of the favorite guests of I'll tell you what, this place is too hard, jeez. Um, I need to just talk about the uh, political segment of the John Singler show. Because as you, as you people know out there, I have a lot of politicians, and I'd like to introduce my, my mate, Mr. Bob Hawke. Oh, John, uh, it's really good to uh, appear on the show with you tonight. I'll tell you what, Bob, would you tell the Australian public your new theory? Uh, well, it's always as I've said, John. Uh, I've put it over the years. I'd like to see this country adopting the policy of an honest week's wage for an honest day's work. I've always said that. <laughs> about the commercials that you've come out with? I mean, they're pretty damn embarrassing. You've taken the country down more notches than I have. Well, there's only one thing I've got to say to that, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's holding a cue card up, says I've been given the boot. <laughs> well, it's on you, mate, because if I'm sacked, there's nobody else in Australia left with my arrogance, my bad taste, and my mangling of the English language. Who are you gonna get to replace me? <clears throat> Hello world, this is John Laws. 
John Singleton is quite an extraordinary man. He has been described as a man who has no enemies, just about 8,000 friends who hate his guts. <laughs> What is there left to say about John that he hasn't said himself? As I said to my wife the other night, if you were to take away the blonde hair, the blue eyes, the fine physique and the money, what would you have? And she said, you. The man of the hour, Mr. John Singleton. I didn't realise the sincerity this was going to be approached with. I thought it was just going to be one of those flimsy, gentle things where people take an occasional dig at you. Instead, it's turned out to be a rather intentional character assassination. <laughs> this afternoon I was going to hurry away to uh, do the show tonight, but I think we have achieved something because as a result of today, uh, I can see nothing to hurry away to. People said I get out of bed at five o'clock in the morning to go home. This is not true. I get out of bed at seven o'clock in the morning to go home. <laughs> Those who have uh, been to my home would realise why this is so. It's nothing against you, Maggie. It's just the house. <laughs> I don't know why everyone has to take digs at the cops. You know, it's those two that brought me on. You know, how one had a concrete foot. He told me it was for kicking. Later on, you'll find out it, it's really for swimming. <laughs> Paul Martell insinuated I met Maggie at Lin Lismore Workers Club and uh, asked her for a fascinating evening for the first night. <laughs> That's not true. We met at the Tradesman's Arms and she asked me. Thank God I said no. <laughs> it's always good to see Johnny Raper, and in fact I always do tend to see him. Carol is here tonight, which reassures me that it is Monday afternoon and not Friday night. <laughs> oh, Carol, you know I'm with him. You know nothing would go wrong. Remember that night when Maggie found you and me in the... <laughs> I think... All in all, the day for me has been the most fun I've had since Dad. It's nice to have you with me, Dad, uh, since Dad had his first stroke. <laughs> uh, and, and Dad, I'm not bagging your second stroke. Nothing wrong with it, but <laughs> I, I just had a, a worse time with the first one. And uh, that's the only time I can think that sort of relates to today.